So uh, thank you for invitation. That's a great opportunity to present our recent um, work uh, performed at, uh, in Paris um, on delocalized long lived proton spin states in aliphatic chains. So um, <clears throat> in this talk, we will um, discuss uh, liquid state in MR. Um, and, um, you know, in uh, typical um, spin pairs which interact at high fields, they're actually usually uh, weakly coupled, meaning that their states are um, basically Zeeman states. And this uh, happens when the difference of chemical shifts is much larger than J coupling between the interacting spins. However, there are some cases where this is not the case. Uh, so J coupling is, uh, can be much uh, larger than difference of chemical shifts. And in this case, actually the basis describing uh, the system uh, would be different. It uh, will consist of uh, three, three triplet states <clears throat> and one singlet state, or almost uh, triplet and singlet states which have interesting uh, properties uh, with respect to its uh, symmetry. So triplet states are symmetric with respect to spin permutation and uh, uh, singlet state is anti-symmetric anti to with respect to um, spin permutation. So uh, if you think um, about the relaxation properties um, of such systems, you probably wouldn't expect uh, that the symmetry has something to do with the relaxation um, times. And it turns out um, that indeed, um, <clears throat> most of the time, it doesn't have to do unless you have really strong, um, uh, really, really symmetrical systems, which was uh, um, realized uh, by Malcolm Levitt and his group and over the last 20 years, a whole field of singlet state MR, NMR has emerged. So normally, um, the memory of spin system is uh, limited by uh, longitudinal relaxation time, uh, T1. And uh, in two spin systems, uh, this relaxation describes equilibration of um, populations uh, across triplet manifold. Now, uh, it turns out that if you somehow create imbalance between triplet and singlet states, it actually can exist uh, for much longer time. So um, this is very interesting. And um, the question arises where um, you actually can uh, create such uh, states. And recently we discovered um, that this can be done in aliphatic chains. So in the moieties of CH2 groups uh, bound uh, next to each other. So if you just uh, look at uh, uh, structurally uh, at these uh, fragments, obviously um, geminal protons are exactly the same. They are indistinguishable, assuming that there is no, uh, there is no uh, Kairos center uh, nearby, nearby. Now, uh, Quite interestingly, uh, this is actually not true for symmetry of spin system. And um, well, uh, this in fact was known since very long time. Uh, this is a so-called uh, uh, magnetic inequivalence and for aliphatic chains, it was discussed by Schum. Um, and um, the symmetry breaking term comes from out of pair vicinal J couplings between the protons. So uh, in solution, there will be three main rotomers. And uh, in each rotomer, the vicinal J coupling depends on this uh, angle uh, between interacting spins. Obviously this angle in each conformation will be different. So the J couplings will be different. And uh, it can be shown that if uh, the population of these rotomers in solution uh, is not equal, there will be, um, <clears throat> uh, the spins will be uh, magnetically inequivalent. And uh, for three CH2 groups, you would uh, denote the uh, spin system as AA prime, MM prime, XX prime. Okay, very nice. Now, <clears throat> Um, how actually uh, this type of experiments, singlet state uh, experiments are performed. 
there is a very simple and elegant um, pulse sequence, <clears throat> which is called spin lock induced crossing. It was introduced by uh, Stefan de Vins, Matthew Rosen, uh, around 10 years ago. Indeed, this is a very um, simple uh, sequence. Uh, uh, you need uh, two pulses to uh, create long lived states. Uh, and the heart of the sequence is the spin locking, uh, which is synchronized with the evolution of J coupling. And uh, intra pair and additional uh, out of pair J couplings. Then you, after creating long lived state, you let it evolve. So it's kind of T1 inversion relaxation where you prepared your state, then you study how it relaxes over a variable amount of time. Then because this is a single state, um, it, uh, you can apply gradient filters to remove all the signals which uh, has rank uh, higher than uh, zero and convert back to magnetization and observe uh, the signal, how it decays. Um, so when we realized that uh, this nightness technique is applied, uh, can be applied to um, CH2 groups, we thought, hmm, something is uh, still missing from a symmetry point of view. So if you radiate uh, this CH2 group, uh, uh, or you can irradiate this one CH2 group, uh, can you actually irradiate both of them at the same time? And it turns out that, yes, you can. And we call it uh, polychromatic uh, slick. So uh, it turns out if you analyze carefully spin dynamics happening uh, during this process that uh, the conditions for these uh, slick pulses should be different. Uh, the in <clears throat> amplitude of the pulse should be weaker and the pulse itself should be stronger. However, it allows you to convert essentially um, <clears throat> twice more uh, magnetization into uh, this long lived imbalance. And upon reconversion, you observe uh, uh, twice uh, higher signals uh, on both pins. Okay. So uh, it turns out that actually this kind of logic can be applied to um, molecules with more than two CH2 groups. And for example, uh, here um, we show that uh, you irradiate with the first leak uh, one uh, end of the molecule and uh, uh, redoubt on the another end of the molecule. And uh, it, apparently the singlet, uh, the long lived state is delocalized through, um, through um, the chain. And this de uh, degree of delocalization um, can be obtained at infinitely high magnetic fields. So uh, normally for molecules uh, in water, without any degazing, you get a, a lifetime of such uh, a singlet states uh, around 10 seconds, which is uh, around five times higher than uh, T1 of uh, uh, CH2 protons. After having uh, all this methodology, we decided to look you know, at different uh, molecules and uh, it turned out that uh, uh, in uh, molecules that we, which we tried, uh, which we tried to um, uh, investigate, most of the time, uh, these CH2 groups indeed have uh, very nice long lived properties. There were a few cases where actually um, spins were really uh, equivalent and therefore uh, long-lived states couldn't be um, excited. Now, a, a short practical consideration. Um, you know, if you look at the uh, appearance of the multiplet of uh, CH2 group, uh, normally it's uh, something like triplet. And uh, it's very difficult to say, um, well, if there is some inequivalence or not. It turns out that a simple way to check, very, very quick uh, experiment, is instead of using 90 degree pulse, uh, hard pulse excitation, to use a sleek uh, directly applied at the center of the multiplet. And um, um, it could be, it could happen that these outer very weak transitions, which are almost invisible in a normal spectrum, they are called forbidden transitions or combination lines. 
these lines uh, will be enhanced. Um, they have very characteristic speed rating uh, of uh, around uh, 27 hertz, and they are reproduced uh, for all, all uh, different molecules we studied. So this is a kind of uh, 10 minutes uh, maximum 10 minutes experiment to uh, quickly check, do you expect to see uh, long-lived states in this particular CH2 group or not? Now, um, now I would like to present some ideas, uh, so uh, some ideas for applications. So uh, it was discovered in group of Jeffrey Bodenhausen around 10 years ago, that actually these uh, long-lived states uh, present a remarkable um, contrast upon a protein ligand interaction. And um, in the systems which were observed, we actually found a model system, uh, uh, which is a DSS. This is a standard molecule. People would normally add it into a, a sample to calibrate uh, chemical shifts uh, uh, in uh, proton spectrum. And it turns out that this molecule actually interacts with a, a BSA, which is a cheapest and simplest protein. Um, so uh, apparently they, uh, they bind to each other. And uh, this can be done, it can, can be observed uh, by uh, many NMR uh, techniques. But uh, uh, it turns out that uh, um, if we uh, perform titration experiments and measure uh, lifetimes of long-lived states, we observe very, very strong uh, um, contrast in uh, uh, actually incredible uh, uh, ratio of concentrations. So in, for example, in this, uh, uh, for this point, the ratio of concentration DSS to BSA was 10,000 molecules. And uh, the lifetime of long-lived states dropped uh, almost twice. Uh, at this uh, ratio, no other uh, uh, parameters, uh, NMR techniques uh, cannot say anything about uh, if there is interaction or not. And um, with this respect, uh, uh, we believe that um, such um, screening of long-lived state uh, can be very useful for drug screening. Now, um, it also provides a way to um, observe uh, MRI contrast. So in this experiment, uh, we performed slick encoding and imaging uh, on the second stage. We used a sample which uh, essentially uh, was two compartments, so two coaxial uh, tubes, and the inner tube contained uh, DSS and the outer tube contained a DSS with a little bit of addition of this PSA. And uh, again, uh, the ratio of these uh, uh, concentrations was such that you cannot uh, observe any contrast in uh, standard MRI approaches like T2 based contrasts. There was no. But uh, here you, uh, we show an image uh, of this experiment just normal with a very short relaxation time. So you have both compartments. But if you increase this uh, relaxation period, the outer compartment uh, would uh, um, uh, um, relax faster. So uh, these are actually cross sections uh, obtained from uh, similar 2D images from the center. Uh, and uh, finally, one another idea to uh, generate contrast in MRI is based on uh, selectivity of excitation of long-lived states. So in uh, this example, we put uh, homotaurine in the center tube and uh, GABA in the outer tube. And it turns out that um, GABA and homotaurine, they have um, uh, CH2 groups which have exactly the same chemical shift around 3 ppm, but the other CH2 groups have different uh, chemical shifts. So then uh, you can create selectively um, long-lived states uh, by radiating uh, by polychromatic sleek, either in GABA by simultaneous radiation of uh, its CH2 group or on, uh, only in homotaurine, and then read out on this uh, overlapping peak and then we indeed see that uh, uh, basically uh, in these two uh, experiments, we detect uh, only signals of homotaurine, which is uh, in the outer compartment, 
or only of GABA, which is in the inner compartment. With this, um, I would like to briefly outlook. Uh, so um, we believe that a significant expand of uh, long-lived states methodology uh, by finding these um, long-lived states in uh, many molecules with uh, aliphatic chains can be useful for drug screening. We are currently working on uh, hyperpolarization of uh, those states using uh, DNP and parahydrogen-based experiments. There is some room for development, further development of the uh, sleek or another approaches. And uh, something which I uh, didn't mention at all, but in principle, uh, when you create uh, um, these um, correlated sp uh, states uh, in, in involving many uh, uh, pr proton spins like six, uh, or we can do uh, more, eight, 10, uh, there were actually very interesting um, evolution uh, occurring in this in those chains, which can be relevant for quantum information theory. With that, let me thank uh, my uh, uh, colleagues, Anna Zonafield, Ike Razona Haera, Filippo Pelopesi, Jeffrey Bodenhausen, uh, funding agencies, and of course, uh, thank you for your attention. I will be happy to. Uh, answer questions if any and discuss. Please.